This is anti-brain rot. I'm not just going to teach you how to draw the ear. I'm going to teach you the Latin names and how to remember them. So let's learn about the ear. We start with the ear hole. This is called the ear canal, or more accurately, the external auditory meatus. External comes from the Latin externus, meaning outside. Auditory comes from Latin auditorius, meaning to hear. And meatus comes from the Latin meatus, which means a passage or a channel. This is the passage where sound goes into your head. Covering up most of the canal is a little bump called the tragus. Tragus is Greek. It means goat. And it perhaps refers to hair that grows in that area. Just below the tragus is the intertragal notch. So this is a notch, a little groove, that's between the tragus and something else. And that something else is the antitragus. The antitragus is another bump of cartilage that is directly across from the tragus. The tragus the intertragal notch and the antitragus form the bottom part of the concha. Concha is Latin for shell. It's meant to describe the shape, kind of a shell shape or a bowl shape, that leads to the ear canal. Perhaps the best known part of the outer ear is the helix. Helix is Greek. It means spiral or coil. And it's that curved rim on the outer ear. It starts in the concha and curves all the way around. Some people have a little bump here. It's called the Darwin's tubercle. Tuber means lump, and cull means small, so a small bump. It's possibly a remnant of a pointier ear shape in an ancestral primate. I'll keep drawing the inside of that helix line, and then I'll draw the outside of the helix line up until about here. Then we get into the lobule. Lobule comes from Latin lobulus. It means small lobe. This is also called the ear lobe. Looking at the helix again, there's one more part. The helix swings all the way around here, but if we just look at this part here that goes into the concha, this is called the crus of the helix. A crus is a leg or a branch in Latin, and so it refers to something that sticks out. Let's move to this section here. This is a scaphoid fossa. Scaph is Greek for boat. Oid means resembling, so resembling a boat. And a fossa is a ditch or a depression. In other words, the scaphoid fossa is a ditch resembling a boat. This area, the scaphoid fossa, separates the helix on the outside from the antihelix on the inside. That's this whole area here. And we can divide the antihelix into a few different areas. There's another fossa, or groove, kind of depression, and it's triangular in shape, aptly called the triangular fossa. It's right up here. And because of that groove there, the antihelix looks like a Y shape. This section of the Y is called the superior cruce, or the leg above, whereas this section of the Y is the inferior crus, or the leg below. Those are both part of the antihelix. Let's look at the concha again, that deepest part. This is that shell shape. We can divide that up into a few different areas too. You have the simba. Simba is Latin for boat. Remember earlier we had the scapha, which was Greek for boat. So you have a Greek and a Latin boat here. But the simba is Latin for boat, and that's the part of the concha here that is above the cruce of the helix. And below the cruce of the helix, we have the cavum. Cavum is Latin, and it means a hollow. Uh, you know, think about a cave, I guess. I have to apologize. There's one bad side effect of learning what you just learned. You're going to be looking at people's ears differently from now on. If you got value from this content, please do leave me a like, a comment, share the video. It really does help out the channel.